Before I even get started with this review, I just want to note that this is a Canadian children's film from 1985. Also, before I really started taking this channel more seriously, to work on my editing skills, I did a short series of videos on here that I slapped the Analog Chaos label on. They were absolutely terrible, which is why I took them down, but I had some dialogue gems here and there in some of those videos, so if I do actual reviews of any of the movies I did those videos for, instead of putting a scene at the end like I normally do, I'll take a few of the Analog Chaos clips and use them as a capper instead. Alright, let's get to my review of The Peanut Butter Solution. We all experienced it, things that freaked us the hell out when we were kids, things we didn't really grasp or understand, things that just didn't look right in our eyes as a child, or just extremely disturbing happenings whether it be in a film, or video game, or TV show, or what have you, and the peanut butter solution seems to be the grand champion of childhood trauma. When I was originally trying to seek out this shadow of little one's brain hemorrhage psychology, I scoured the internet for the better part of three to four years trying to find a damn full uncut posting of this somewhere so I could experience it for myself and pinpoint where all of these bizarre and twisted childhood memories were coming from. Not from yours truly, but from everyone else because I never had the horrific pleasure of watching this when I was ten years old. Nope. I was too busy being emotionally damaged by the likes of the hell scene in All Dogs Go to Heaven Or the really fucked up clown scene in the Brave Little Toaster. that was and still kind of is, my childhood scars I need to repair. But a lot of other adults in my generation have been really just hurt and bent by the peanut butter solution. It was a quest that I had to embark upon because a kid's movie that messed up that many people has to be seen. 
And now that my search is over, all I have to say is what the hell did I just watch? Michael and his friend Connie are screwing around on their way to school. They find the house that burned down the night before. Michael climbs in, gets frightened by something, and loses all of his hair. Sounds pretty stupid, right? Well, it gets much, much more jacked up as it progresses. The only other details I'm going to displace here, in case you haven't seen it, is that after that happens, the rest of the movie entails kids getting kidnapped by a weirdo art teacher that calls himself the Senor, and he forces the children to wear orange prison jumpsuit type outfits to manufacture magical paintbrushes out of Michael's hair for him to sell. Connie also puts a bunch of the peanut butter solution on his nuts and has pubes that grow so freaking long and thick that the hair flows out of the bottom of his pants. I said stop. Stop going right now. Stop! Michael's hair also gets so damn long that it becomes a distraction in school and is kicked out because of it. I've had three teachers tell me today they'll resign if you go back in their classes. So finish your class and then you better go home. And you, Connie, I think you've got a problem too. There's much more out of context, awkward happenings to absorb in this film that would just take too long to talk about, but all I can say is even as an adult, this movie is just wrong and disturbing. Ah, why does your sister look like E.T. with a wig on? Pizza face! Come on, eat it, Michael! No! It's fruit. It's exactly what mom makes when you eat that. I don't want any. Come on! Oh, that does it. That really does it. Pizza face. Connie chose the right time to say some inappropriate things. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Baskin. Hi, Susie. Nice morning for a ride. Hi, Connie. God, it's the human flea. Who cares about the ants? Just step on them. Hold on. Um, I, I want to check and see if there are any letters from Mom. Hurry up. Again, nothing. Oops. Hey, you little guys. It's dangerous around here for you. Whoops. Watch out! There's ants! Ants? There's no ants. There are! You're strange, Connie. Don't use your imagination. You're an art teacher teaching art to kids, and they're not supposed to use their imagination? The hell kind of creative teacher are you? Look at him. Don't use imagination. I don't use imagination, senor. I use the charcoal. Oh, mamma mia. That's my little sister. A mountain of trash makes children act brash. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm going around here. Hey, Michael. Come this way, it's easier. Whoops. Ouch. Ah, my leg. Ah. Hey, Michael, stop. Come on, Mike, please. Don't be so stupid. 
Look, I'm sorry I suggested it, okay? It's suicide. Okay, if you can be so stupid, I'm gonna leave. I tell you, I'm leaving right now. I tell you, I'm leaving. I'm not a big fan of cats either. How is he sleeping? Fine, but I found the cat curled up on his head like a fur hat. So I kicked it off. I don't believe it. Jeez, I hate that cat. Come on. As bald as Michael is now, he kind of reminds me of someone else. How does a kid lose all of his hair from getting the shit scared out of him anyhow? Bananas, eggs, soil, peanut butter. Sounds like a disgusting concoction that could rival any application of hair club for men's formulas. Here it is. Here's old Charlie's recipe. Let's see now. Uh, no, you don't. This, uh, this here is my last treasure. You can learn it, but you can't have it. Ah, the sensational smell of crackers, eggs, and purely voracious disappointment. I'm not going to say anything else about what happens in the film, but I do want to touch on the music briefly. The tracks Michael Song and Listen to the Magic Man were sung by Canadian artist Celine Dion, while the rest of the score for The Peanut Butter Solution is filled with candied, jellied, warbled keyboard synth riffs, to ease anyone's twinge for weird fever dream music. After all of this time trying to dig up this kitty damage corpse, someone on YouTube finally posted the entire movie uncut. And this is another one of those treasures that never initially made it past the VHS era until just over a year ago when Severin announced that they were remastering and printing this on Blu-ray under their Severin Kids label. I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing, but in some really messed up way I'm glad it's there to ease everyone's pain as to whether or not they were recalling some really bizarre fever dreams from their childhood or the film itself. Even being all grown up, the idea of smearing peanut butter on your bald head to grow your hair back is absurd, but so is having pubes so long they billow out of the bottom cuffs of your jeans. Sweet Jesus. I'm not going to be eating PB&Js for a while. One of the winos counts. Tommy was so was in this movie, dear lord. I tell ya, I'm leaving. Michael climbs up into the house that burned down last night and gets the crap scared out of him. <laughs> and then he promptly rolls back down. Honey, do we have soccer today? Good morning, Michael. Where's Billy your hair? Corgan? Why do you keep pulling children in your classroom alone? <laughs> I've had my doubts about you, and I've been checking. What chicken? I found out that you've been thrown out of two schools, that you faked famous paintings, and that you've changed your name and appearance four times, and you claim to be Rembrandt's great-great-great-great-grandson. And that you're also on a sex offender list. Oh my god.
anger, the embarrassment, the shame. I am bald, everyone hates me. The hell are they talking about here? Dad, he's digging up Earth. I don't think he's gonna eat it, do you? Beats me, Susan. I've heard pregnant women get a craving for Earth sometimes. He couldn't be pregnant, could he? Unlikely, I'd say. Oh, hi, Michael. I have a dollop of Daisy. Can you believe it? After a week of searching, I actually found my sugar. Can you believe it? After a week of searching, I finally found my trail of cocaine. <laughs>